Good morning, Oklahoma, and welcome to Cow-Calf Corner. Our topic this week is mature cow size relative to profit potential and revenue generated relative to calf sales out of a commercial cow-calf operation. I arrive at that topic this week based on some follow-up questions that we have had to the articles from the past couple of weeks. And we start off by just addressing some realities in the commercial cow-calf sector in the United States. Over the past few decades, our mature cow size has went up pretty substantially. There's a growing amount of empirical evidence that tells us that there's about a 10 to one relationship, meaning that if we increase mature cow size by about 100 pounds, we only see 10 pounds of increase in a calf weaning weight. Uh, there's research collected that tells us that as cows get bigger, they wean off a lower percentage of their mature weight. It's easier for a thousand pound cow to wean off close to 45, 50% of her mature weight. Whereas cows get out there from 14 to 1600 pounds, it's more of a struggle and they're probably gonna be at 30 some percent, maybe get as high as 40% on average of their mature weight. If we do some basic forage budgeting and think about mature cow size and its impact on the forage dry matter intake that a cow needs annually, we see that for every 100 head of 1,000 pound cows that we run, we could run about 71 head of 1,400 pound cows. And so it's today we work through some math relative to current calf markets. And assuming a 90% calf crop weaned, looking at 71 1,400 pound cows versus 100 head of 1,000 pound cows, assuming the 1,000 pound cows are gonna wean off calves at about 450 pounds, Whereas our 1,400 pound cows are gonna wean off about 500 pound calves, equal steer heifer split and current report, which is a little bit less per pound for those heavier calves. If we work through a 90% calf crop, those weaning weights and think about a value of 465 a pound for 450 pound calves versus 435 a pound for the 500 pound calves, those 100 head of 1,000 pound cows based on additional calves and additional weaning weight at a higher value actually return a little over $47,000 more per calf crop than the 71 head of 1,400 pound cows. It's important that we have growth. Obviously, in the cow-calf sector, we sell calves based on pay weight. That's our primary profit center. And we should put selection pressure on growth, be it at weaning as yearling, if we're retaining ownership past that, maybe it's those final finished weights or carcass weights. But that needs to be selection pressure applied relative to mature cow size. We know that these positive genetic relationships exist between birth weight, weaning weight, yearling weight, post weaning gain, mature weight, mature height, finish weights and carcass weights. And yet through EPD use and trying to keep birth weights down and maintain calving ease, we have been able to do that over the past 30 plus years while spiking weaning weight and yearling weight. What have we not done? Probably put enough selection pressure on the backside of that growth curve and made sure that mature cow size didn't get too out of hand. The point is, all these traits are moderate to high inheritability, a proper and intended breeding program that addresses mature size relative to growth can be accomplished. The heritabilities tell us it can be. So we've got a success story from our past that tells us we can address mature cow size without compromising the growth that we want in the calves we produce. I hope this helps. Appreciate your feedback questions from the past couple weeks. Have a good weekend, and as always, thank you for joining us on Cow-Calf Corner.